A change in scenery for me always sparks my creativity. Having different subjects, different atmosphere, it always brings out a sense of adventure and vision. Then there are places like Death Valley. They're constantly changing. It's a place that I can visit over and over and each time I find something new to explore. It's truly a unique landscape and one that always delivers with both inspiration and an unforgettable experience. It's the perfect combination of both desolation and beauty. Zabriskie Point is like an opening scene for Chris and I when we come to Death Valley. Uh, we come from the Nevada side, so it's the first thing we see. It's always like a, a tradition to come here and just shoot like a sunrise. Uh, this place is absolutely insane with the, the colors and the shapes of the, the ridges and everything here. It's just such a mind-blowing place and, and popular for a good reason. It's absolutely beautiful, but it's also uh, significant for me and Chris for another reason too. Uh, it's part of one of the greatest stories ever told. Uh, it's filmed here in Death Valley, but there's a lot of scenes with Zabriskie Point as well. So it's always cool to come here and see, you know, some of the scenes and reflect back on them. You know, like I said, we're huge, huge fanatics of Star Wars. So being here and being able to see all this stuff and remember things like The Mandalorian and A New Hope and, and all these things where it was filmed in Zabriskie Point or has like, you know, quick scenes of them flying through is always, uh, is always pretty awesome. So I just did a, uh, a very fast, very long hike. I ran up to an area that I'd never been to here at Zabriskie Point. You can see behind me, that's where everybody stands, is way off in the distance up there. There's a whole, whole crowd of people. Ah, suckers. Oh, so I wanted to climb up to a different area. So I'm pretty much, everybody's gonna have to clone stamp me out. <laughs> uh, whatever, it is the way it is. Uh, putting in the work like this though is really nice. I have a nice open view of the all the the shapes and the colors and the lines and patterns that I like below the pointed rock. It's jutting up into the sky. I'm down lower, but I've eliminated by hiking this far all of the other mountains before it. So the, a lot of the the nice patterns right below the point are blocked um, by these darker mountains when you're standing way up there at the overlook. So now I'm standing up on top of the dark mountains and now I have a nice clear view of everything here. All the patterns that I like so I can really get creative with uh, my shots here and I have a lot more flexibility with what I want to shoot. Lots of abstract patterns. Oh, this is just absolutely amazing. So I'm not sure which I'm more proud of. Hiking out here to get a unique shot or the fact that everybody over there has to clone stamp me out of their photo. <laughs> It's starting to get windy again, so I got to uh, pack up. Light is harsh, so uh, I'm done. I got my shots. Now it's time to get back to the truck and go have second breakfast. Thank you. 
my absolute favorite things about Death Valley is everything constantly changes. Uh, people ask me some of the features that I find out here, ask me where they're at, and the honest answer is you have to just go out and look because things are always looking and seeming different. Every time I come here, depending on the last rain, the conditions, uh, things are constantly changing here and places are moving, you know, whether it's mud cracks or salt flats, things are constantly, constantly moving. And that's part of the beauty of this place is, you know, every time you're here, you're going to find something different. Just my advice, get out in the basin and just walk. Walking through here, you think that it's just a flat area. From the road, it looks like it's flat. It looks like there's not much, but there is so much crazy and, and uh, just odd terrain here from like mushy ground to rock hard and crispy. And, uh, you know, like these salt flats that were in here, uh, they form... They got this kind of mud around these salt, little salt rings or salt circles that's uh, pretty crazy. And, you know, I was hoping to find this area on Google Maps and we just, we've been walking around for about an hour and found it. And uh, it's just, it's absolutely mind blowing what this place looks like. And, and uh, like I said, this is my fourth time here. And this is a place that I haven't seen before, a thing that I haven't photographed before. I've seen photos of it, but, um, yeah, just being able to walk around and explore and find different spots and different features is one of my favorite things about this beautiful park. So you guys gotta check this out. So I'm down here. I want you to listen to this. It sounds almost hollow when you're walking on some of these. You're trying not to break anything, but it almost sounds like there's water underneath uh, when you're walking and it's like plates of this salt. It's like there's like a hard plate and you're just walking and everything's kind of brittle and you can hear it's like the salt just breaking up and it's uh it's such a such a unique place and i just it's absolutely beautiful So after running around Badwater Basin uh, for sunset last night, we got a nice sunset, but I was absolutely exhausted. My feet were killing me, my knees, my back from just standing there. You know, we got there, I think like three hours before sunset. So uh, this morning we're here at Artist Palette and I wanted to just pretty much take a picture from my truck if I could. <laughs> so we just hiked up this little hill, like not even a hundred yards and uh, Got some really cool painted mountains behind us that I've never been to before. The first time I came here, it was closed. Uh, the last couple of times I've been here, it just we ended up just doing other things. So this is the first time actually being here out of my this is my fifth time to the park, fourth time, fifth time, and uh, 
Yeah, it's awesome. It looks cool. Uh, it's sunrise. We're the only people here right now. There was a car that was here when we pulled up. I think they were just camping though in their car. So, yeah, whatever. This place, it looks like um, almost, I want to say like ice cream. Like you mix a bunch of ice cream together. You get pink and mint and you know chocolate and all this other stuff. It looks pretty cool. So, um, excited to see it, you know, as soon as it gets light out here and yeah, maybe get a shot. absolutely perfect for picking out abstracts in landscape photography that's one of its strengths one of its many strengths uh, you know having these big landscapes is really nice with a nice sky but finding details in a landscape that help tell that big story you know having that big landscape is great it, it's like backing up and seeing the whole picture but when you zoom in on these little details like this and that's what like I said a telephoto lens is brilliant for uh, you really start to get an idea of what a place really looks like. Those intimate details are so important when trying to tell a story. Because you know, the first thing you want to do when you see a place like this, it's so big and there's just so much going on that you want to try and include all of it. But I think that's a big mistake because the more you try and include in a landscape, um, the more muddy the subject actually is to the viewer. You know, the viewer needs to be able to look at your photo and know exactly what the artist is trying to convey to that viewer. You know, the subject needs to be clear. And if you're trying to include everything that is catching your eye in a photo, like everything with a, you know, I'm showing up here with a 16 millimeter lens and shooting the sky because there's color in the sky. And then you have all these colors in the mountain, all these ridges, and then you have this leading line down here in the bottom leading up to it. And then you have a peak over here on the right hand side that you want to include and then there's also a peak on the left you start to really lose um, purpose of the photo you know the viewer starts to not understand what it is the artist is seeing what the artist is trying to convey the message and the story you know in a, a photo like this it's very abstract you know it's it's not just about mountains it's about lines it's about colors and it's about patterns you know, it's, it's, there's no better word to describe this type of scene here. It's just, it's abstract and it's, it's using a long lens, uh, puts the emphasis on that, on the abstract part of this scene, not the mountains, not the sky, not the landscape. It's the patterns, it's the shapes, it's the colors. That's it. Keep it very simple. You're, you're eliminating any distraction anywhere else and you're making that subject very clear to your viewer.
bother. I love shooting sand dunes, but oh, they are a pain. You know, you think you're at a spot like, oh, just maybe to the next one. And then we get to there and like, oh, you know what, maybe that was a little bit better. So you go, and next thing you know, I'm way, way far away from Chris, but oh, there's a lot of people here today. So there's just tracks everywhere. And that's been the biggest, uh, the biggest challenge is getting out away from people where there's no footprints or minimize them anyway. There's still a lot where we're at, but there's definitely a lot less here than there is back over by the parking lot. So we had to do a little bit of walking, but oh, this place is awesome. Can't wait to start shooting. Well, I'm moving again. Uh, I found a spot that I thought that I thought I would like, and I don't like it anymore. It's uh, not a whole lot here. Like I said, I'm trying to shoot back towards the west or the north, but I'm having to hike east, so I'm trying to get around these these dunes with the footprints, and it's just uh, yeah, it's not working out. I've walked all over the place. Chris kind of found a spot back over here on top of this, one of the taller dunes. And I've been walking around like crazy trying to find something. And as soon as I find something, she gives me a call on the radio and she's like, hey, you're right, standing right in my composition. I've been here for like a half an hour waiting for the light and I'm running around. So then I had to drop down and actually end up being a better shot when I dropped down. Uh, lots of beautiful light and shadow here, guys. This is amazing with the lines. Oh, this is fantastic. Just very abstract. You know, as the sun's going down, again, everything's changing and it's just, it's, it's awesome. Very, very nice. No clouds in the sky, but no clouds needed because everything's about uh, the lines and the texture and the light. And so just freaking awesome. So what you're looking at here is you have this diagonal line. So you have layers here of these horizontal lines going across. You got a shadow kind of coming across in the middle. And then you have a diagonal line going up towards the top of the screen there. So this is all about lines and light and shadow. So it's a really nice scene. I'm going to take this shot here. I'm going to wait a few more minutes to see if the shadow changes at all. If the shadow gets longer on the bottom here, um, it makes that ridge stick out a little bit more. I'll take another shot. But uh, yeah, it's a really nice little scene. The sun has set on our trip here to Mesquite Flat Sand Dunes, but heading back to camp and we'll be out in the morning. But uh, yeah, nice shoot. I love the sand dunes. A lot of people though, a lot of people here, a lot of tracks everywhere, but uh, it was so much fun. Well, hello. <laughs> what are you guys doing? So as soon as it clears up again, I'm going to try and get a shot or a time lapse of this mountain here with the low hanging clouds around it and just lots of snow. They're already really cool uh, mountains because of all the patterns and the lines on them. Uh, it's really interesting, but with snow on them, <laughs> it's even better. Oh, 
so we pulled over we drove down a dirt road that is uh, something I haven't been on before and we just started driving and we pulled over Chris saw a panel she wanted to take which she's way over there in the distance where the truck is it's a nice light here in low-hanging clouds and I started walking out because I saw an area that looks white back here wanted to go check it out uh, just walking out here though the features on the ground are just they're ridiculous they're just absolutely amazing i can't really describe it i mean I, I you guys have seen it on the uh some of the b-roll here but saw some more of these kind of white dots but they're not really dots or like circles like the other area was these are more like designs and uh the kind of white and brown that that i don't know it just it's hard to explain just it's amazing though just you get out and you just start walking you see something that maybe looks interesting and just start walking like i'm not even sure what's going on over here in this white area but i'm walking over there right now to find out Uh, just getting out and walking around exploring finding a place like this where Literally we just parked and didn't know what was out here just saw something that looked maybe like it could have some interest Walking out here and just and finding this kind of stuff is so much fun, and it's uh, It's what it's all about. You know what? I mean just getting out here and finding new places and photograph no photograph It doesn't even matter. Like I said, this is just oh, this is so much fun. Alright, I found a shot that I think I like a lot. So I have a little S-curve. Uh, the white, uh, so these cracks are white salt, but they're bordered by this hardened mud. And then inside of these little rings are, you know, the salt in the, in the middle here. And everything is raised around these rings here. So the rings of salt are raised up above the, the you know, the base or the, the bottom where the other salt is. So you have these rings um, and these salt cracks that are going through the scene here and I have a little s-curve right in front of me and uh, To me, it's a little more interesting than just a flat white that's right over here so this is like the transition between uh, The complete white salt flats that are right here, and then you have this kind of hardened mud and These little salt designs here. It's such a fascinating little area and uh, I've never seen anything like it in any of the other places I've been to and it's just, uh, like I said, I can't, I can't say it enough times, uh, just getting out and walking, you find these new things. I've been coming here now, I think this is the third year in a row I've come out here and tried to find different spots. And, you know, this spot was a, a new spot for us too. We just stopped and started walking and it's, it's paid off big time. I, absolutely beautiful. The sun keeps poking through the clouds here. It's getting ready to set behind the mountains. Uh, but, you know, these really low hanging clouds around the peaks are letting the sun kind of pop through every once in a while. So it's making for a, a pretty dramatic scene, but just absolutely fabulous.
we got some nice color in the sky this morning. We had a full moon and uh, we found a place with a lot of water in the basin here. So we're kind of trucking around and, and shooting in all different directions. So great way to start the morning. This is day number eight or nine here. We didn't actually do any filming for the first like three days. Uh, Chris and I have been talking about, you know, sometimes when we're trying to film these videos, either the photography suffers a little bit trying to make a video or the video suffers a little bit because, you know, we can't find a photo or, you know, the pressure of trying to get, you know, all that together. So you guys have probably noticed Chris hasn't been in a lot of this video. Uh, you know, she's been trying to concentrate on the, on the, uh, you know, photography part of it really. So yeah, we spent the first, like I said, three or four days not even filming anything, but this is, yeah, day number eight or nine now here. And uh, it's probably gonna be the last day here. We're, we're pretty tired, pretty exhausted just from, you know, if you guys have ever been to Death Valley, you know, eight or nine days here is a long time and a lot of miles on the boots and, and uh, carrying around backpacks and walking everywhere. So it's, uh, it's been pretty exhausting, but absolutely fantastic. We've had some amazing, amazing conditions, uh, some beautiful photos, found some new areas to explore and just, uh, uh, couldn't ask for a better trip. Mm -hmm. 